33 to 32. Up top. Broken up. Covered down. On the move. Picked up by Justice. Here's Fife directing traffic. Coverdale will pull the trigger. Knocked down from three-point range. He missed that shot, but Justice is called on the foul out on the perimeter. And there is a knack in knowing when to fall. Comes hard off the screen, up comes the shot. Yeah, he gets hit, but you have to fall down to get that call. If Coverdale does not fall down, he probably would not be at the line. Justice with his third personal foul. And all the little things that the Seahawks did well in their win over USC, those things aren't happening here tonight. No, they're not. And I think defensively, Jerry Wainwright understands that it's a different game. When we had his comments at halftime, he recognized that it's a different style of play. His team has to get used to it. But it's a notch better or two notches better than what they're accustomed to at their level of play throughout the season. First points of the game for Coverdale and Indiana with a 46 to 32 advantage. They just wear you down. They're wearing them down a little bit with their half court sets. Ball movement. Stuart Hare who may have had the dunk of the tournament so far in that win over USC. Not only the dunk but the timing of that dunk. Out of bounds Burnett. And the Seahawks turn it over with an even 13 minutes to go. 12th turnover. Craven with a jumper for USC to force the extra session. There's the two-handed finish for Hare. And the celebration afterwards for Jerry Wainwright and company. No celebrating so far tonight, though. Seahawks down big. Offense hasn't been needed. Heinrich again hustling with Joe Bikini to deny out of bounds to Stanford. Well, everyone who's played Kansas said you try to search for a weakness in this team, and there is none. I mean, they've got size, they can rebound, they play great defense, they've got wonderful shooters outside, and they the transition game. Eddie Sutton has seen a lot of basketball. The Oklahoma State head man through his career said, I, I can't think of many teams that have the transition game right. that Kansas possesses. But, but, but usually, Dick, when a team runs so well, they obviously love to play that type of basketball, which means they would rather not play in the half court. So if you can slow them down, at least you, you get them out of their rhythm. Joe Bikini left alone, can't hit the three. Langford, the rebounder, up to Heinrich. Here they are on the run. And the pass is perfect, and Collison delivers the two. 14 for him. What a... just waiting for the proper moment to deliver the pass to the big man so all he has to do is catch and finish and it was in a little bit of traffic Johnson yeah Borchard again he's made a couple of catches in the last minute or two as he did on Thursday night he has terrific hands for like a guy. backstop able to flag that ball down here's you know Heinrich thought about making that pass at about the top of the key foul line area but saw some red shirts and some hands in there waited one more dribble so he could just get a little a bit of a better passing angle to deliver. Second foul on Collison. Stanford with five team fouls and Kansas three here in the second half. Posting up Jacobson over Collison can't score. Borchard keeps it alive and uh, out of bounds to Stanford as Heinrich goes down again. This time in trying to make the save had to vault over the Stanford cheerleaders and very considerate says I hope you're OK. I, I just don't understand it. 14 and something Jerry Wainwright told us a couple of days ago. If Brett Blizzard is the only guy scoring for the Seahawks, the team's in trouble. That wasn't the case against USC. It has been the case here tonight against Indiana. And he, against the Trojans, he would have liked to have seen him get 10 assists, meaning that everybody would have been touching the ball. Right now, he has zero assists. Here's Jeffries way outside. Callahan sticks with him defensively. Fife off penetration. Coverdale searching for that jump shot, and he has found it a three. But he comes up gimpy, backpedaling. See the way he read Fife's delivery, though? He, Fife turned the corner trying to get to the middle of the floor and, cur and curl down the middle of the lane. Boom, the kick out pass works. They read each other very well. 9 nothing Indiana run. They have their largest lead at 17. Blizzard, ball movement for Burnett. Here's Terrell cutting to the rim. 
They've just been contesting every shot. Every shot, you're out. right on the money with that defensively. Nothing has come easy at all for the Seahawks. Coverdale lost it off the dribble. Out of bounds. A timeout, 11.59 to play, second half here at Arco. And welcome back to St. Louis. A look at our tournament summary. How about that? The big uh, bombers, the Ohio State Buckeyes, they are the team to lose from Ohio. Kent State and the others have won. Missouri Valley, both Creighton and Southern Illinois have advanced. And in the Pac-10, a 7-1 record. Only the Southern California Trojans lost in that uh, overtime to UNC Wilmington. UCLA Cincinnati tomorrow. That'll be one of the feature games here on CBS. The big man Simeon, Borchard, Collison, they battle, and Borchard able to pick off another. Nine rebounds for the seven foot center, Borchard. Hernandez, the freshman point guard, he'll be taking over the attack in a few two years for Stanford. Actually, when Hernandez came in midway through that first half, he kind of settled the Cardinal down, so at least they could get into some kind of offense. Borchard, oh, oh boy. Collison ran underneath him and picks up the blocking foul, his third. Didn't quite get to the spot. Uh, Chris Borchard playing with a little bit of frustration right now. I don't think he minds. I think he's just trying to get some contact. The Stanford team struggling for points any way they can get them. And it's almost like Jacobson and Borchard throughout the season having to carry so much of the offensive load as good scorers as they are, always looking to get to the foul line. We asked Borchard yesterday, with your dad being a football star, did you consider football? He said, are you kidding? When I was a sophomore in high school, I was 6'8 and 160. Where was I going to play? <laughs> <laughs> we said something about wide receiver. He said, hey, I was too busy taking piano lessons anyway. My mother wanted me to improve my fingers. And you know what? It's work. He has terrific hands. Joe Bikini, too, said, well, his mom insisted on playing the piano. That's maybe said, why? Well, Left-handed in uh, basketball and right-handed and everything else. Heinrich. How he weaves his way through all those defensive trees and lays it in. You know, and then the immediate thing is he puts the fist in the air, which is the call of the next defense. You know, no, no congratulations, no uh, histrionics, no big act, no pound on the chest. Next play. Henrik passes up the three, sets up Gooden. Feet were on the line. Two for Gooden to give him nine. Trying to join the parade of uh, scores for Kansas in double figures. It's been a ballet, this Kansas team. Jacobson, good backdoor move and a feed from Hernandez. And the back pick set up, back pick set up nicely. Chris Borchard and Casey Jacobson, his easiest field goal probably in about oh, a month. <laughs> he has to work so hard for his points and has to do so much off the dribble. That's the tough way to play. And when you consider what a good shooter Casey Jacobson is, it's a shame that Stanford doesn't have better ways to get him shots. Good defense there by Johnson to cut off Gooden's path. Gooden keeps it alive, bats it out to Boshi. Under 13 to go here in the second half. Kansas in command throughout since a 15 0 start. And a whistle on the drive as Heinrich made his move. Chris Hernandez with his first foul. Roy Williams, 14th year, one of the top coaches in all the college basketball, and you know the pressure on him. He's had great teams, and he's not been able to get himself a national championship. And uh, the fans keep feeling, well, this you know this is the year, this is the year, this is the year. And I know he's got a lot of folks rooting for him around the country. One of the, not only the best coaches, but one of the most popular men in the game. Uh, people keep asking him if this is his best team. And of course, he said certainly it's the best offensive team that he has ever had. And he said if I could ever get these guys as seniors next year with uh, Gooden and 
Collison and Heinrich, he said that he would be thoroughly convinced that it would be the best team that he ever had. It's Roy Williams makes the point that when you have seniors and the experience and how important that is in college basketball to be successful. They went to the Final Four in 98 when Kentucky beat them in overtime. Kurt Heinrich, doubtful to play today, but has he ever shown that even on a painful ankle, he is a top guard in this country. 15 points for him as Kansas continues to steamroll the Stanford Cardinal. Nice jump hooked by Josh Childress, the freshman from Lakewood, California. He has four. But it's Ben Kansas from the opening shot. 15 straight points to start the game. Drew Gooden off the mark. Simeon underneath and a whistle. Foul will be against Kansas, but a timeout. 11.43 left. Kirk Heinrich and the Jayhawks putting on a clinic. Sunday on 60 Minutes, Mike Wallace and the real Nobel Prize winner that Russell Crowe plays in the movie A Beautiful Mind. That's Sunday on 60 Minutes. 7.45 to go here from Arco Arena. Final game in Sacramento before the NCAA tournament moves on to the Sweet 16. Fight gets it over to Jeffries and a foul call. And now let's check in with Dwayne Ballin. Dwayne? I and Coach Wainwright just told the Seahawks to keep pressing, put the pressure on, and most important, do not bail out Indiana. He believes see, the Seahawks still have a shot. All right, Dwayne, thank you. No bailout on that play. Jeffries was driving to the rim and would have had a pretty clear look at the basket. Now they force him to earn it at the free throw line. Callahan picks up the foul, number four. Hornsby back on the floor for Indiana, and Moyer will head to the bench. And Jerry Wainwright right, also wants to have the opportunity for his team to really continue to put pressure on the basketball. That's what he's talking about with that huddle with Dwayne was mentioning. Keep the pressure on, trap, go full court, three-quarter trap, whatever you have to do, but don't let up. Now to make hoops, though. There's one. Blizzard. Brett Blizzard knocks it down. He's got 22 and another one from long range. Yeah, stepped on the sidelines. Indiana turns it over. All of a sudden, the Seahawks are starting to believe a little bit right now. Let's take a look. Watch Jeffries trying to set the screen there. Clearly out of bounds. Good work overall. And it means Mike Davis is going to make a change. Coverdale, the starting point guard, in for Perry. Get a little bit of that stability back on the floor with Coverdale. Can they get it to single digits here? Callahan swings it. Blizzard behind the back. Fife, pretty good job defensively. Carroll, fine first step and a collision. Hornsby went down, as did Anthony Terrell. And the third foul has been called on Kyle Hornsby. One time, Jeffries didn't really help. Hornsby was a little bit late getting in, but a good, strong drive to the hoop. UNC Wilmington still alive. Second half action. And, uh, at Portland's Jefferson High School, he was the student body vice president, the quarterback in the league champions. Boshi getting himself in a difficult position there behind the defender, but once again, the, the Kansas team so well schooled on any kind of penetration, the big men present themselves to receive the pass. So everybody picked up that foul on the scrape, his fourth personal, and free throws coming up. No matter what happens here, and North Carolina Wilmington still very much alive. What they did in the first round, knocking off USC, hanging tough here against Indiana. They have certainly alerted college basketball fans to what kind of program they have in Wilmington and the job that Jerry Wainwright has done there over the last eight years. Oh, absolutely. I think they've uh, really made, put a stamp on their program, one that they can play with a lot of teams in this country. They've had some tough losses this year, competitive basketball games, and, and a terrific overtime win against the Trojans was really a solid overtime period that they played. Terrell just misses on a pair of free throws, and... That's a tough sequence for the Seahawks. A foul called as Chapman was dealing with Coverdale, which will lead to free throws for Tom Coverdale. Chapman picks up his second foul. 
I think most people know the name Wilmington because Michael Jordan is from there. Sugar Ray name. Leonard is right. from there as well. Linda Lavin, I know you're a huge fan of her work. She's from there as well. You have all the Alice sitcoms on DVD. The wealth of Wilmington information here. <laughs> keep it coming. <laughs> Charles Kuralt. Very good. I can keep going. <laughs> Coverdale has another free throw coming after missing on the first. It's a great area of the state of North Carolina, too, by the way. Oh, it's beautiful. And one out of two for Coverdale. Seven points for Coverdale. 57 to 46. Under seven minutes to play now. Second half. Callahan. He got two defenders in the air. Tried to swing it to Ed Williams. And a turnover. 15th of the game for the Seahawks. And that was just a little bit of frustration there, too. Two Indiana players went right by him. Callahan, he's going to just take a seat on the bench for a minute and regroup a little bit. And Coombs checks in to replace him. Again, that door was open. The Seahawks couldn't creep through it. Way outside Hornsby. Indiana with that 11 point lead. Cross court feed on a skip pass from Jeffries to Fife. Down low now, Odell. Haven't said his name all that much today, and he bounces the ball to the Seahawks. Williams up the floor. Got it to go, and a foul. How about the delivery by Chapman, too? He gets out there on the floor, actually had a little opportunity against Coverdale to go towards the basket with it. Good release. Coverdale will come in and try to cut in front. Uh, good delivery, good finish. The Seahawks, like you touched on, Ian, the door is slightly ajar. They're trying to push it open a little bit. First points that UNC Wilmington has put up today in transition. And Newton in the game for Indiana. Williams completes the three-point play. It's 57 to 49 with 6.20 to go. Indiana with the lead. Here's where Jeffries helps you as a big guy, huh? Bringing the basketball up the floor. Look at the handle on Jeffries. Hornsby feeds the post. Jeffries turning for the layup. Now, how about that whole sequence, though? He handles the basketball. He may be injured a little bit right now, too. He's flexing that left foot. He may be cramping up in the calf. Generally, when you pull in the toe of your sneaker like that, you're trying to reduce some of the stress on your calf. Now, he, you see him on the replay, though. He dribbles the ball up. He goes down underneath the versatility of Jeffries to make things happen. Jared Jeffries, a hometown sports hero from Bloomington, Indiana. Blizzard got it for three. Fife walks away shaking his head after that one. He was there again, hand up. Quick release by Brett, Blizzard. Brett Blizzard, the best three-point shooter in the country two years ago. He's got 25, four of seven from three-point territory. Jeffries driving, count it, and one. Five thirty-nine to go, second half. Indiana 61, North Carolina Wilmington 52. Jared Jeffries at the free throw line, a chance for three. Mike Davis riding Jeffries a little bit. Two solid plays by Jeffries in a situation here where UNC Wilmington trying to get back into this basketball game as the clock starts to work against them. And, and Jeffries converts. Twice. He's answered twice. 16 points. Seven boards. Two blocks. Indiana back in front by 10. Chapman goes behind the back with the dribble. Blizzard. It's been all him for UNC Wilmington. Oh. A blizzard has hit Sacramento. It's official. It's the indoor variety, too. Boy, he is really feeling it right now. 27 points for the junior from Tallahassee, Florida. And that's against Fife, really, who's a pretty good defensive player also. 62 to 54. Blizzard is keeping the Seahawks in this game single-handedly. We will hit the five-minute mark of the second half. Coverdale. Out of bounds. Much better job, Seahawks, defensively. Watch the little bit of room that he has. He just gets a little space, crossing over against Fife and knocks it back. Boy, they just won't go away. Ten seconds remain on the shot clock, and Fife will toss it in for Indiana. Eight-point differential. Coverdale with eight to shoot. 
Jeffries lines it up. Can't get it to drop for three, and an uncontested rebound to Williams. Jeffries has to get back under the basket. That's where he's getting his results. Williams, a jumper. Oh. Gets the roll. It's a six-point game. Hello, Wilmington. Here we go again. 30-second timeout taken by Indiana. 4.38 remaining. Second half from Sacramento. Just about everybody out there, fans, media, are pulling for that underdog eighth or ninth seed. It was Rhode Island that beat them uh, in 98, and uh, that'll be a goal 10. At the other end, Borchard with the two free throws. Now the big man for Stanford, 11 points, 11 rebounds, another double-double for him. And after all those injuries of the past two years that have knocked him out of half a season or most of a season, uh, looks as if this uh, big junior's... Uh, the fifth seed, Indiana in the south, leading the number 13 seed, UNC Wilmington, 62 to 56. It's a 24 to 13 run that came after Indiana took its largest lead of 17. Now I think Indiana has to find a way to get Newton and Jeffries involved on the blocks. That's where they've been having their success. The both of those guys combined with 27 points. Here's the look. Jeffries. Count it and one. Good execution. Good timeout by Mike Davis. He said to him, hey, guys, we're getting away from what got us to this point in the basketball game. Watch this post up here. A little curl cut. Keep yourself between the basketball. And boom, he finishes off the play. Third foul called on Aaron Coombs. Jeffries at the line. No good. And it's rebounded by Terrell. Hoosier 64, Seahawks 56. We come up on four minutes to go. Hare back in there for North Carolina Wilmington. Off the fake, he's picked up by Jeffries. Blizzard, got a look. Oh. Off the rim. Follow attack. Kevin and Williams. What a soft shot again by Blizzard, though. That's a shot that goes long range but comes down softly. It allows your offensive rebounders to go after in an attack. And the decisions, once again, have to start mounting up for both of these teams under four minutes. Williams has 11. Once again, same sets. Get Jeffries involved if you can in Newton. Huh. Blizzard a steal. Took it away from Coverdale. And Blizzard will back it out. Good decision just then. Indiana was okay defensively. Off penetration. Hare needs some help. And ball movement back into the hands of Blizzard. The confidence. You got to keep the basketball in the eyes and the hands of the guys who are confident. Gives it up a jumper. Terror. Terror. Oh, three. Where did this come from? The full court traps have helped to see Seahawks get right back in this basketball game. Jerry Wainwright on the side wants to put a uniform on and get on the floor. The place is starting to tilt, huh? A frantic comeback by UNC Wilmington. Jeffries wants it himself. It's good. Oh, he's showing you how to play the game of basketball on the blocks. They have to keep him down there. Good extension with the left hand. And a foul called on Fife. As the Seahawks were looking to toss it in, and that's it for Dane Fife, number five. Well, you see the attack, beautiful post-up shot, bang, step right into it. Look at the bench. <laughs> A lot of fun. Each school with 10 team fouls, so the double bonus. Fife, three points, one rebound, and a heck of a challenge dealing with Brett Blizzard defensively. Blizzard at the free throw line. He is seven of eight tonight. So Mike Davis will have to make a change defensively on Blizzard as Callahan checks back in, or does he? No. Coombs will stay on after the first free throw. They'll allow the switch. 66 to 61. Blizzard at the line. First one's good. He's in a bit of a zone, huh? Shooting the basketball. Even that last miss he had from long range. Boy, that looked like it was a pure shot that just kind of rolled in and rolled out on him. Callahan back on the floor. 
playing with four personal fouls. And we have a timeout. Indiana's 17 point lead has shrunk to three. All of you will get samples of all the action tomorrow. That hissing sound you hear is Bo Ryan, the coach of Wisconsin, taking the air out of the ball already. Gets that Maryland team. <laughs> yeah. Almost a steal by Miles. Miles Boshi, Gooden still in there. And Collison, four starters for Roy Williams on the floor with three minutes to go and leading 84 57. Childress with the basket. Eight points for him. Collison, short. Jacobson can't get it, Boshi does. Just heard Roy Williams yell to Nick Collison <laughs> cut out the outside shots get inside miles around Joe Bikini and scores Aaron miles with eight. and uh, Kansas with two and a half to go with no let up Stanford uh, with three of their starters on the court. Joe Bikini, another miss. Boshi with a rebound. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Uh, strains begin in the background. Good and a little uh, kiss that didn't quite hit the glass. Well, I think the Kansas Jayhawks got to feel like they have found their game again. As Justin Davis fouled inside. And uh, now Roy Williams is going to empty the bench. We have four Jayhawks about to come in after the first free throw. And Roy Williams, who rarely ever smiles, is always intense while over on the bench. And the crowd here has clearly shifted in Sacramento to the Seahawks side, thanks in large part to the jump shooting of Brett Blizzard. And he is letting it rip. Good rotation, good extension, good follow through, everything perfect about the jump shot. 66 to 63. Look at the game reset, timeout situation, possession arrow in favor of the Hoosiers. Indiana with the ball, 240 to go. Hornsby out on the perimeter. Blizzard in his face defensively. And better pressure outside. The key is whether Jeffries can touch the basketball or not. Jeffries lost his defender. Left-handed lay-in. Well, Callahan went down on that play defensively. Callahan playing with four fouls. There was no call. Yeah, we're going to clean up the floor a little bit with the perspiration. Ballard, Collison. Hoosiers back off defensively as Williams gets it across. We come up on two minutes to go. Inside, Hare off the double. Here's Blizzard, baseline jumper, side rim, and it's rebounded by Hornsby. Moyes got the assignment to try to slow down Blizzard. A little bit of a force, that trap. Coverdale gives up his dribble. And back into his hands. A minute 52 and counting left. A reach in foul. And it will be called on Ed Williams. It's number three on him. As mentioned, the double bonus, so free throws coming up for Indiana. And there's the reach in. The reach ins that come from the high to the low usually get you in trouble. If you try to reach in and you flick upwards, sometimes you can get away with them. Kyle Hornsby, 62% this season. And he buries the first. Foul trouble, Indiana. Fife is already out of there. Newton with four. Callahan has four for UNC Wilmington. One out of two for Hornsby. Farrell gets that rebound and goes up to a level that no one else can reach right now. Six point Indiana lead. A minute 35 to go here for Marco Arena. Somebody may have to step up instead of Blizzard here. It's Blizzard with a leader. Off the mark, Callahan kept it alive, but into the hands of Hornsby. The focus is on Blizzard, so you know somebody has to step up and take a shot for him. Coverdale bouncing. Here's Newton. Oh, looking underneath the basket. They find him. Hornsby, by hair. 
Basket is waved off. Foul was called before. So Hornsby will shoot two, but he was looking for the three-point opportunity. Hornsby was down there. Mike Davis has a smile on his face because he saw the same thing. He's open over on this side of the floor, the right side of the floor. Oh, he was there for a second or two and just could not get the basketball down to him. Hornsby rattles home on the first attempt. And after that timeout, Indiana has come back and answered the Seahawks run. 70 to 63 Hoosiers, another free throw coming. Pac-10's leading scorer, Casey Jacobson, 22 a game, 24 tonight. You look into that face, he's just a junior, but uh, it may have been his last game at Stanford University. Down to the final minute here in St. Louis. Some of the kids that don't get a chance to play much on the court now. Lottick from the Chicago area, great three sports star in high school. Hernandez, freshman from the San Joaquin Valley, he hits the three. 86 62. All of these kids work extremely hard during the season. They go through all the practices and the drills and in the weight room. And what a tremendous thrill for them that they don't get much playing time during the season or ever for that matter to get out on the floor for an NCAA tournament game. Here's uh, Michael Lee. He was the wide receiver for quarterback Aaron Miles in Portland. They were teammates there in Oregon. Zerbe almost twists one in. He's a senior from Andover, Kansas. Whoops, a final foul as Zerbe with a block on. Matt Lodick with 11.6 seconds going. For Roy Williams, this will be the eighth time in his 14 years at Lawrence. He's taken his team to the Sweet 16. And uh, will this be the year for him and this Kansas program that goes back to James Naismith and Fog Allen, Ted Owens? Williams now second only to the immortal uh, Fog Allen most wins. Chevrolet's most uh, valuable players of the game, Casey Jacobson, 24 and 6 for the Cardinal. Kirk Heinrich off the bench, didn't start. Ankle injury, boy, he didn't show any effects from that terrible twist two nights ago for Kansas. Childress. Short, final seconds, Lee takes it all away, and that'll do it. That last tip does not count, no basket for Lewis Harrison. Final score, Kansas to the sweep, 16-86, Stanford 63, from St. Louis to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Dick, thank you very much. One more game in progress tonight, and that's in Sacramento at Arco Arena, where Indiana's Hoosiers lead UNC Wilmington by five, 51 seconds to play. Let's take you there live. Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco. Final 51 seconds in regulation. Indiana 70, North Carolina Wilmington 65. Seahawks have gotten themselves back into this game behind the shooting of Brett Blizzard. 29 points for the junior. Wow, was that ever close to five, wasn't it? Another timeout, though. Indiana using another timeout. Very close to a turnover. Jimmy, Indiana just used its final timeout. Well, they have to remember that they do still have the possession arrow if they get it in and they have trouble to hang on to the basketball, not to turn it over and make an unwise pass. Now it's Coverdale who will get a crack at trying to toss it in. Searching and finds Moyer. Moyer gets it across on the attack. Two on one develops. Hornsby and a chance for three, and that is a killer. It sure is. A lot of teams might have pulled the basketball out right there, but Moyer and Hornsby realized that they had a two-on-one opportunity. So if you have an advantage, go for it in that situation. Gets the shoulders and the ball tucked away. Big time hoop, big finish also going to the basket. 72 to 65, Indiana can add to its lead with 46.4 left. A free throw coming for Kyle Hornsby. He's got 12 points, two out of four from the line. And substitutions, Tim Burnett 
in Ed Williams takes a seat. Hornsby. No good on the free throw. He is not taking advantage at the line. Turning. Blizzard. Can't get it to drop for three. Bodies bumping on the inside. They wanted a travel call. They won't get it. Uh, Blizzard cannot believe that he missed that shot. Actually, Moye made a mistake defensively going for that steal. You see him behind Blizzard giving him a wide open look. Well, there may have been a hop in the air at this, the lift off the floor also on that play with the rebound. Instead, it's a foul on UNC Wilmington, and it means A.J. Moye will shoot two, 78% this season. The Indiana lead is growing, 73 to 65. And the Seahawks dream season inching closer to the end. Indiana trying to close this one out. Doing it at the defensive end. Taking it coast to coast for net. Same strategy here. You just have to continue to do it. Moye wants the basketball. He's going to jog down to the free throw line again. Keep his rhythm. 28.6 to go. Seahawks found themselves in a 17-point hole. They exploded for a 31 to 17 run late in the game, but haven't been able to get any closer than three behind Brett Blizzard's season high 29 points. And Moye is icing this one at the line. He sure is, just knocking them back. Very smooth. Here's Burnett. Jump shot, two pointer, no. And it's rebounded by Hornsby. Well, Indiana knows how to close out basketball games. That was a solid reaction by them in the last two and a half minutes. And a tip of the hat to the Seahawks because they really did a nice job in this first and second round of the tournament. Indiana basketball is back. And the Hoosiers return to the Sweet 16 for the first time in eight years. Indiana, 76. UNC Wilmington, 67. Mike Davis, it is never easy replacing a legend. And Davis has been able to step in for Bobby Knight, guiding his team to the NCAA tournament in consecutive years, and now getting them into a matchup with the defending national champions, the Duke Blue Devils. Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Brett Blizzard, 29 points for UNC Wilmington. Jared Jeffries finished with 22 points, seven rebounds, and two blocks. Don't forget tonight, the district here on CBS. Greg Gumbel coming up in New York. That's going to do it here from Sacramento for Dwayne Ballard, for Jim Spinarco, for the rest of our CBS crew. This is Zion Eagle, Indiana, moving on. Welcome everyone back to our studios here in New York. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. A reminder to you that tonight on CBS coming up, it is The District starring Craig T. Nelson. We will see you at noon tomorrow, Eastern Time. And our first game of the day is in the West. The eighth seed UCLA Bruins take on the top seed in the West, the Cincinnati Bearcats. Then four more games comes your way about 2:15. They'll include number six, Texas against number three, Mississippi State, and number two, Yukon against NC State. In the East, California will play Pitt in the South. And we'll wind up with three games at about 440 Eastern time. And they'll include number two, Oklahoma, number three, Georgia, and top seed, Maryland. Clark, a couple of things today. Some surprise visitors to the Sweet 16 are number 10, Kent State, and number 12, Missouri. And Ian Eagle said it right. Indiana basketball is back. Mike Davis brings the Hoosiers two wins in a tournament for the first time since Branch McCracken almost 50 years ago. Yeah, it's been a while, and Mike Davis and his team deserve an awful lot of credit. All of the teams that advance, Kent, Kent State, you mentioned, outstanding backcourt players that just get after it and play. I'm looking forward to a great day tomorrow, Greg. When I said that about Branch, about Mike Davis and Branch McCracken, that is other than Bob Knight, of course, <laughs> who, who did it a couple Qualify of times. That. Yes, All sir. right, we thank you very much for joining us, everyone, and we will see you at noon Eastern time tomorrow here on CBS. For the waiver, Clark Kellogg, and for all of us here at CBS Sports, I'm Greg Gumbel. Good night.